Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. We're going to be doing a little bit more of a technical video this week. Recently, we've been having some problems with our internet. And the, the PEP wave thing is working great. But what I'm noticing is that uh, I think when we put the solar panels on, we didn't think about elevating that antenna. Not that we could. It's adhered to the roof, so it's kind of stuck where it's stuck. But... Uh, because we've been having problems with it, uh, we've been exploring some options. I put the paddles back on versus the antenna. That really didn't do anything. So, But we've been exploring potentially other options. One of those options was Starlink. We are still considering Starlink, but for now, we're going to be trying the T-Mobile home internet. Um, came highly recommended. Uh, I was talking to Chris from Venturesome Couple the other day, and he has both of them and said he really likes this one so far. So... Uh, I went ahead and signed up for it. Um, now, at the time of filming, there's a business and a residential version. I believe they're both $50 a month. Um, we did do the business one because we have the businesses we can utilize. So it was $50 a month, no down. Just paid about $40 in fees to get it activated, and then that's it. So let's, uh, let's glance and see what comes in the box. So right out of the gates, it came with a little quick start guide and then some safety and regulatory information. All fun and fancy stuff. I'm going to put you down for a second. All right. Well, that is literally it right there. So if you didn't have a setup like we have, you could just use this. It'll produce its own Wi-Fi. Um, we, we, we might do that. But on the back, there's two Ethernet ports as well. That's what those little yellow things are. Uh, we may actually just plug this directly into our PEP wave. Haven't quite decided yet. So um, for now, we're just going to fire it up, link just my computer to it, see how it does. Um, but this is literally the entire thing. It does say in the front for best results placed near a window or in an RV. Not as much roof material, so I think we're good pretty much anywhere. And then it comes with a charger that is a USB-C. You plug it in and fire it up. So let's get this rolling. All right. Well, that kind of fires up. Let's talk about why we decided to do this and kind of what we've heard and are expecting. So we've heard anybody getting uh, anywhere from 40 to over 100 gigs down. We've been lucky to be get five or six here as of lately. So, um, yeah, it, it's utilizing the new T-Mobile 5G network. Um, our router down there is 4G LTE. So, automatically, it should be faster than what we currently have. So, let's get this connected all the way. Um, it just got done firing up. So, let's get this connected all the way and see what we can do. All right. <clears throat> so, you can kind of see right there that we are on... Uh, our own Wi-Fi, but let's do a quick speed test just to kind of see where we end up here. Yeah, so you can kind of see there that's that's on the that's on our mobile must-have team T-Mobile card, um, which is LTE, six point nine down, so almost seven down. And here's here's where I actually have an issue. The upload speed, it spikes, but then it drops down. And you'll see here in a minute the average. Yeah, less than a megabyte up. That's a problem considering we make video. So let's get this switched out to the other one and see what our speeds look like. Okay, so we are now connected to the new T-Mobile device. You can see one bar there. Let's see what we look like. So we have about half signal strength. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and pull up our speed test one more time. Let's find out how this does. Okay. Okay, 
So 27.6 down, 3.25 up. So would I consider that good? Eh, not with what we do. Uh, it's better than what we have, but marginally. I will tell you, for a T-Mobile card through Mobile Must Have, we were spending $150 for an unlimited. With this, we're spending $50 a month plus tax uh, for unlimited. So it's cheaper. Um, eh, I'm not that impressed. Uh, first reaction. I want to get it hooked up to the pep wave, um, put it down there, see if that does anything or makes it uh, potentially any faster or slower or anything. So let's actually do that real quick. All right, so what I've done now is I've logged into the back side of our pep wave and um, I have plugged in via a ethernet cable the, the new T-Mobile hub, home internet hub thing um, directly into the pep wave. So the pep wave now broadcasting. And so now what's happening is every device we normally would have on, which is our like um, our temperature sensors, our computers, our phones, all that kind of stuff is now hooked up. So I'll get a better idea for a speed test. Before, that speed test that I just put on the screen was just my computer. So uh, typically the more things you add, the slower your speed becomes. So I'm going to flip you guys around and show you what happens. All right. Normally I do a screenshot, <coughs> but it's just a little easier to do this. So you can see cellular one, cellular two. So this is our other T-Mobile line through Mobile Must Have. This is our AT&T line. Those are both in standby. <coughs> the WAN, um, the, the line essentially is connected. Um, I, those are our, I, yeah. So those are connected and then we have our speed tests up. So, and then just to show we are back on our Miller's in motion. So that is our pep wave. Let's see what the speed test does. Come on, at least those speeds. That's not a great sign. Oh, wow. Okay, that's better. Yeah. That's not good. Oh boy. All right, 21.3 download, 0.06 upload. So that's concerning, to be honest with you. Um, the download is fine considering all the devices we have on. That's enough to stream and do a few things, but I'd struggle with video calls. Um, the upload's really concerning considering we upload YouTube videos. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little frustrated, to be honest with you. So let's um, let's do this. Lauren's coming by. We need to go take a round bale of hay to the horses, um, all the retirees. So I'm going to fill Lauren in on what's going on with this and get her take. Um, this was worth trying, um, but my, my gut reaction is to take it back. Um, I say that. I'm curious what it is tonight. So we'll... we'll pull this out through today um, and I'll keep updating you guys kind of how uh, this kind of shakes out as as cell towers get busy. By the way, it is Sunday. Uh, it's just after noon, so it's 1.15 uh, in the afternoon. So I don't know how many people are on the network right now or not, um, but I would imagine as, especially inside the RV park, uh, the more people that come on, um, the, the more people that come home uh, and then through the evenings that start to use their computers and stream stuff and all that, I would imagine that's going to go down, um, which is a little bit concerning. So, yeah, let's um, let's update Lauren, and then we'll kind of see what this evening looks like. But let's 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 go chat with Lauren first. All right, so you ready for the results from the T-Mobile home internet box thingamajigger that I can't figure out the name for? Sure, why not? So, it was a little all over the map. Okay. The best speeds I saw in testing it for about thirty to forty minutes mm -hmm. was um, about twenty-eight. Uh, megabytes up and a few mega two megabytes down 2.6 I think was the best yeah um, the worst I saw I took a picture of that one because it was depressing was 4.53 megabytes down and an upload of 0.27 that's terrible <laughs> it's not great um, it's not 
necessarily worse than what we have now, but it's also not better. So at, at the worst case scenario, we're saving a hundred dollars. Okay. Well, we're saving yeah. a little less than a hundred dollars cause tax on this thing. Okay. Cause the, the one fifty rate was all inclusive and then okay. I mean, this it's one. It's about a so, hundred bucks. Close enough. Right. Um, and it is plugged directly into the pep wave. So that works. Okay. Um, but you know, considering the connectivity issues I've been having for work, like an right. upload video, for instance, so like the videos we send you guys out to the YouTubes, um, you know, at 0.28, mm-hmm. the average size of one of our videos is 17 to 22 um, gigabytes. Well, and you rely on the internet so much for work, right. you know, with, you know, meetings, Zoom meetings, et cetera, things like that, mm-hmm. and the uploads, and then if I log on to my uh, medical records. Yeah, that's home, cumbersome. That's really cumbersome. So that doesn't really sound like it's going to cut it, to be honest. So my other concern is we have we have a lot of devices on board that require internet. Well, that all that all comes into play. So like the temperature, the temperature set monitoring system, the uh, all the Apple TVs, all of that stuff matters mm-hmm. um, because it draws bandwidth away from what our computers and the things that we need to use it for. So, so it sounds like your Apple TVs have to go and we're going to read books. <laughs> I was just going to say your phone and computer because you're not really working all that much. But uh, I, don't, I don't use them that much. You don't. Um, no, we just have a lot of things that are internet hungry. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing to say that if we move the rig that, that all of a sudden we get 150 down. Right, exactly. Um, and we have. On the old system, on the old card that we don't, or we're going to get rid of, we, we did. I mean, I remember Camp Finfo for the Switch It Up huddle. We were getting like 240, 250 down on that system. Yeah. So it's a little disheartening to drop like that all of a sudden and have issues. And it could just be the area we're in now. But we were here doing fine before. So, so then the question becomes is, okay, well, we have this now. I've already put in the cancellation request on the other one. So we're kind of in the same boat. Um, one thing I told them and not you is I want to see what this does overnight. Sure. So like th- the question becomes is do we consider Starlink now? Right. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with what, what happens this evening. Because when you, when you buy something like this, you have 14 days, at least in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, you have 14 days to take it back to the store for a refund and you return it and kind of cancel everything out. Mm-hmm. That's a Texas law with, a con- with anything with a contract you have 14 days. Um, so I don't know if that applies to other states or not, but um, it, it, it's, yeah. So the downside to Starlink, so this didn't cost anything to start. It cost like 38 bucks in fees. Right, and that's um, the downside is if we go with Starlink, that's a much bigger startup cost. So Starlink right now, and this is after the portability thing's been removed from residential, the price increase, all that good stuff, of course. Um, so right now for us to do Starlink, it'd be 599 to start plus the first month in tax. So I think it's like right around 700 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and it's 150 bucks a month after that. And then we would probably buy the stuff to be able to put a pole uh, on the back of the rig to mount the Starlink up there. So that's a big cost difference for sure. It is. Um, now it's the monthly, like if you're looking at it from a monthly budgetary standpoint, it's about the same as what, as what we've now. been paying. Yeah. Um, But if we're going to get, you know, 85 down everywhere we go, plus have the ability to get internet where we wouldn't normally get internet. Right. um, Because, you know, Starlink's independent of cellular networks. So, but Starlink won't operate while we're in motion. Correct. Which our current one did. It it, it does, and it would still, because we still have the AT&T card. Okay. So that would still work. Or I could pop the AT&T card out, and I could then... Um, put that in the little mobile router that it originally came in ah. and just stick it on the dash and you'd be able to do that. So so I could still work from the car? As long as we had the AT&T services. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so it comes down to cost versus effectiveness. Yeah. So yep. what's your gut reaction say? It doesn't sound like this, what we did today, is any better than what we've been dealing with and being frustrated with. Right. And so it doesn't really sound like the T-Mobile business is really the way to go for us, unfortunately. Well, and we still want to test it tonight. Now, yeah. if we continue to get those speeds overnight, mm-hmm. uh, we're borderline. But 
it's a hard pill to swallow for you know 600 bucks plus a couple hundred dollars for the pole and mount and all that so i mean you're you're looking at close to a thousand dollars to get going right. with everything you want to get going with because you know I, i'd want to get something to put the starlink in so it doesn't get damaged when we're in transit um that kind of stuff um it's just a it's that's, that's a big pill to swallow the 150 doesn't scare me as much probably just because i'm used to spending it on the other i'd rather not but can you say you're used to it you know what i mean uh, I'm the budget person. My heart hurts right now. But from a budgetary perspective, nothing changes. Right. So our buddy Chris filled us in about a new thing from Dish Network called Genesis 5. And apparently when the whole Sprint T-Mobile merger happened, um, the government still wanted a fourth carrier. And so they left the door open for somebody else. That's going to turn into uh, Genesis 5. Yeah, I mean, maybe as a backup, I don't know that 50 right. bucks a month in this other device is worth a backup. Mm -hmm. But maybe that is. I mean that, but that's going to put us at 150. Now we're at 170 dollars for internet. Yeah, it's still less than a lot of other people pay. So with that, is there actually like a dish? No. No. Okay. It's a cellular plan only. So. Oh, okay. You would have to get. Oh, I remember why I didn't want it is because you can't bring your own device. Ah. So. There's the downside of that, um, and I don't know that I want to spend 200 dollars a month on internet for this T-Mobile thing and Starlink too. I don't. All right. <laughs> well, welcome back to the internet video. All right. Well, in the never ending saga that has turned into this trying to find the right internet video, we have finally taken the dive off the deep end. Elon got our cash. So we did go ahead and order the Starlink system. This is Starlink Rome is what we're set up on, which was essentially Starlink for RV. So it is the deprioritized, good everywhere, $150 a month, um, and then 500 bucks for the equipment plus tax and shipping and all that fun stuff. Um, so uh, there are a ton of videos out on the YouTubes <laughs> that talk about installation and all those things, and we'll do a more in-depth video on Starlink, but for now, I'm just gonna set it up and do speed test, um, you know, and, and kind of talk about the T-Mobile Home 5G versus Starlink versus what we had before versus campground Wi-Fi and all that stuff as one big hole, um, just to kind of give you a, a broad comparison. Uh, I will do a video over Starlink um, probably next week or in the, in the near future uh, once I have more time with it and we decide to keep it or not, so. Yeah, let's get this thing unpacked and fired up and go from there. All right, well, it has been a few weeks since we set the Starlink up for the very first time. Like I said back then, we didn't really go over the setup, at least in this video. We do have a full Starlink video that'll come out, so be on the lookout for that. But let's run a quick speed test. Uh, we've actually used it in a couple of locations now, and I wanted to run a quick speed test just to kind of show you what we're getting. So we are currently in Waco, Texas, and I do have a partially obstructed view. Um, this is a different scenario of camping. We're here at a horse show. Uh, it's kind of parking lot style. So I didn't want to put the dish too far away from the rig just because I was worried about somebody hitting it. Um, so it's not very far off the rig. So that's the rig is actually the obstruction. So we are currently connected to it. You can see down there at the bottom how it says Starlink. We're going to hit go and kind of see what this does together. Yeah, so it's, I mean, for us, at least what we're seeing um, lately, it's been on the slow side, 2025 um, gigabytes down. Um, but this is a little more average. So download was 89.1 or megabytes, not gigabytes, sorry. Um, so 89.1 megabytes down, upload eh, five to six, somewhere in that ballpark. Look, it's going to end up right around six. Yep, 6.05. So that's kind of been what we've seen every single time on the average. So during high use times, it's been a little bit lower. And then on high times or on less busy times, like right now, it's kind of middle of the day uh, on a Friday. Um, it's been great. It's been that. I've seen speeds as high as about 225 megabytes down. Um, and the slowest I think I've seen is right around 22, give or take. So uh, overall, we're actually pretty happy with Starlink. Our biggest concern is going to be just making sure we have a clear view of the sky, which for the most part we do. So T-Mobile home internet versus Starlink. Where do we stand? Um, if you could afford both, do both. I think they're 
two of the best options for RVers right now. Um, we're going to elect to keep Starlink and ditch T-Mobile. Now, if we got into a position where we'd be a little less sure of where we're going to be, um, I would probably keep the T-Mobile no matter what, especially if Laura and I were both working from the road. Right now, it's just me, and then she still goes back to her job. Because we go back to that site in Fort Worth, all the time. We know we've got a clear view of the sky there and Starlink has held up for the last two weeks there phenomenally. We've been in Waco for a couple of days now and it's done really well here too but again it's a wide open sky there's no trees no anything else around so I would definitely consider keeping that T-Mobile uh, if I might run into that other issue. Also keep in mind we do have a grandfathered AT&T SIM card that is still in our Pepwave Max Transit Duo. In addition to that we are hardwired in um, Starlink is connected, so everything is actually running through that pep wave, not just independently. So, <sighs> for now, what we're going to do is we're going to run off of Starlink. Um, and if that changes in the near future, we will let you know. Also, be on the lookout for a full Starlink video. We'll give you our full opinion on just Starlink by itself. I knew this was a long video. I know I rambled on about internet, which isn't the most exciting thing, but hopefully this helped anybody out there that's looking to uh, change up what they do for internet on the road or maybe you're like us and have to still work uh, while you enjoy this amazing lifestyle. Thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure and check out RV Unplugged. I'm going to say that a lot. Uh, episode two came out yesterday when you're seeing this video. So um, I haven't seen it yet because it's the day before. It's Friday right now. So um, I had the zip lining one, it's exciting. Um, it was a blast to film. Please make sure and check that out. Also, check out the rally uh, in May in Athens, Texas. Come join us along with everybody else from the show that's going to come hang out. So thank you guys, and we will see you next week. Bye, Mom.